<laughs> but if you come out here and your and your Doc Martens is looking dusty, it's like, what are those? <laughs> In what way would you say you treat yourself better than your everyday sneaker? Um, that's a great question. I would say cleansing. I treat myself a lot better. So I guess cleansing for a shoe would be kind of what we're doing now. Like just getting rid of all the dirt that you don't want on it. Um, another thing is also innovation, I think, has also been very important for me. Congratulations though, on your relationship. Thank you, man. Thank you. It's been a great one. I think it's one that I'm happy with, that mm -hmm. I'm solidified in, and I really just want to see how I grow in this relationship. Yeah. Because from the beginning, starting off, it's just been growth for me, mental-wise, physically, just being more self-aware of how I would like to treat myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's been really big. So what are the three things you would say go into a good relationship? Mm, that's good. A good relationship, the three things that I would recommend would be one, communication. So knowing how to speak with your partner in a respectful way and in a way where both parties feel heard. And funny enough, we were just talking about this because something came up where we were arguing over something so stupid. And so it was just basically, there was a situation where I had to, um, do something like it's required of me and then there's another situation on her side where you know she might she might never get this moment again or so she thought in the moment and that kind of fueled our reactions to come out in a certain way where it came off as like i don't care about what 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 you're doing right now it's about me so that's how we were both feeling and to each its own, the experience was unique to, to you know, each individual in its own way. So that's something that I can say. It's like, don't fault yourself for that part of it. Just fault yourself and talk about it and realize where you guys went wrong. And that when you speak to each other, you have to sit down and actually want to actually figure out the problem of how both parties can get, you know, whatever it is they need in that moment. So what we figured out was, you know, she can get what she wanted tomorrow. It seemed important in the moment, but in all reality, it is something that, you know, you can go and get tomorrow if you wanted to get. So second thing I would say would be creating a space where you both can really learn deep things about each other and what's been changing in their life, what's been changing in your life, how you've been feeling. So this could be, for example, like, you know, date nights and something like that, where you can really speak to your partner and really understand them and not, you know, the assumptions that you build over time just by being with them in the same household. It really helps to, you know, set those boundaries to say, hey, we're going to do this. Even in times of arguments, it's like, hey, we're going to do this. We're going to go out and maybe we, you know, figure out something. And the third thing I would say would be... Hmm,
being in a relationship in the first part, not getting in there trying to fix someone. I think a lot of people go wrong in that aspect of just saying, okay, well, if it's not this way, I don't want it. It's like you have to take into account that that's another human being that has had their own walk in life, maybe a different culture, different background, different experiences, and you can't fault them for that because one, that's not fair, and two, you have your own experiences that make you, you know, do things in certain ways. The best thing I would say you can do is just try to, you know, understand. So basically my whole thing is just about talking, but those would be the three fundamental things that I think could really make or break a relationship. Would you say talking is sometimes exhausting? It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is and I'm a fairly more reserved dude when I do get in the space of people I tend to you know talk a little bit more just by you know the circumstance but it's hard to talk about things that you don't want to talk about or things that you really don't want to go deep and hear about yourself because the best person that can really tell you are your family members and the person you live with day to day because they see how you react, how you function, how you treat things, how you move and all of this. And when you sometimes hear things that you don't want to hear about yourself, it hurts. And we tend to go away from that rather than go towards that because you will find a lot of healing and a lot of understanding and create better reactions, better habits, and a better lifestyle for not only yourself, but, you know, the world around you. I think if everyone acted, you know, a little bit more healthily or viewed issues in a more logical standpoint, I think the world would be a better place for sure. So, yeah. What's one piece of advice you would give to someone that would like to be better at communication? Mm. I would say probably start off with self-love, self good self-proclamations towards yourself. Forgiving yourself for, you know, being naive in certain situations. Understanding that you're not perfect, that maybe you might never be perfect. The only perfect being is the man upstairs. So I think when you relinquish some of that some of that burden that we tend to put on ourselves to be the best of this, to be the best of that, to, you know, always try to do things in its best form. I think that creates a lot of inner self battles. And I think the greatest battles, I heard this somewhere, I don't remember where, but um, the greatest battles that we fight are within ourselves than with those around us. So taking care of yourself first, understanding yourself first, spending time with yourself, whether that might be by meditation. Some people also go to God as well and pray, which is a great, which is a great thing to do, can really help you to get more in tune with just who you are as a person, the type of person you would like to put out there for people to see and to actually walk in that and not try to imitate that. <coughs> sneaker or an everyday sneaker? Um, this was a sneaker that I thought I would never see again when I went to New York. And so I was just like, let me just grab it. It's not an everyday sneaker. I have worn it. Um, when I first got it, I wore it a lot. So that's why it's very scuffed up. But 
I haven't been wearing it at all this year. Last year I wore it a little bit, but this year I haven't I haven't really been been wearing it that much. I don't know why that is. I think my style has just been becoming a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more reserved and minimalistic. And this shoe is a kind of like very bright, sunny day. You can wear these with like shorts or something like that. So I don't know, I think that's why I've stepped away from it, but I really like the design of the shoe. So it's definitely uh, a solid piece that I'll be keeping with me for a long time. What brought you into the shoe? Um, I would say my partner really got me into shoes in general. I really wasn't a big shoe guy. I would get shoes from like H&M, like the all black ones. Um, my favorite shoe brand actually, which is Puma. I would get a lot of Pumas as well. So when I saw her starting to wear more ones and just the way she was styling it, I was like, that's kind of cool. So whenever I saw the opportunity to grab a shoe that I thought was just flamboyant and just like crazy and like, what can I do with this shoe? I just automatically thought to grab it just cause of just seeing her and just how she wears colors is very beautiful. So I was like, I would like to wear colors. I used to wear a lot of all black and funny enough, I'm in all black right now. But um, yeah, I try to implement a lot more um, colors into my apparel just because I think it gives it more character and more life. What would you say is the difference between an everyday sneaker versus a dream pair? Um, an everyday sneaker is something that you don't mind that it gets beat up. You can take it on all terrain. You can walk on mud with it. But a dream sneaker is something that you want in its best form. So this would be something you might only wear for, you know, really, 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 really important um, occasions or circumstances. I think that'll be the main the main difference between every day. But of course, your everyday sneaker can also be a sneaker that you like. It just it just depends on favoritism. Earlier when you pulled up, we talked about your morning routine. Mm -hmm. What is the importance of a morning routine? It's, it's very important. It's what starts your day off on its best foot or on its worst foot. Sometimes you might realize that if you leave out something in your routine, something might be affected. So if you just wake up without having a morning routine, if that's something that's sufficient for you, because people can work in those ways where they're just, you know, quick and in the fly and just trying to get to everything and moving and moving and moving and moving. But for a person like me, I'm very, I would say, connected to my body and my mind. And I think it's really because I had to grow up very early. So I lost my father at the age of 12. Um, due to the Ebola crisis, which happened in West Africa in Sierra Leone. And so that was very touchy for me because I was close with my dad. I used to, you know, study with him late night when he would come back home and, you know, or come back home from a trip from Africa or something like that. It was always like the best sight to see. So when I lost him, it was really devastating for me. And you know, the people around me were, you know, also telling me that, you know, now you have to grow up, you have to grow up and be a man for your mom and, you know, make sure that she doesn't suffer, doesn't struggle or, you know. So I took that very literally and my people didn't see it in the way that I saw it, which was 
wow, maybe this boy can actually go out and, you know, do something that's not in the traditional realm that we're used to. And so that was a fight that I had to have with them and which hurt me a lot more and really broke me to where I feel originally with the loss of my father, not only did I have to grow up quicker, but managing my emotions just as a man, you know, there's this stereotype that, you know, you're supposed to just suck everything up, bottle everything up. And that was something that I believed for a very long time. Like I didn't believe in crying. I didn't believe in, you know, all this weak, soft, soft things that you can do as a man. And so, you know, that made, that just made me very uptight and I treated people badly. And so when I caught on to that and I realized, hey, this is not what I want to do. I actually want to, you actually want to uplift and help people because this doesn't bring you any joy. You just feel more depressed. You feel more sad. You feel more like, you know, you're doing your dad an injustice for the great legacy that he's left behind you. And so it just brought me to this path of, you know, I want to be the first millionaire in my family. I want to be able to, you know, just work while wow, my mom can chill and relax for the rest of her life where my brother doesn't have to do anything. And, you know, kind of like being a matriarch for my family. And of course, you know, that to adults and like a 12, 14 year old child is telling you this, you know, it sounds like, how are you gonna do that? You know, those questions pop up and, you know, fair enough, they, those were fair questions because it is, a, a, a big assumption from a kid, but just where I was mentally was just, I'm ready. I just want to go out there, hit the ground running and get it as early as possible. So that way, you know, I could already start that foundation of setting a, le a legacy for my kids, setting a legacy for my family. And even though we're not in the best of communications right now, you know, Ultimately, I would love to fix that. I just really need the, the time to myself. And there are a lot of apologies that need to be, you know, that I need to have from certain people that just I haven't gotten yet. And it's like we try to skip the elephant in the room and try to be cool again. But with issues, you have to address them. You have to bring them up. You have to put them on the table. You realize where you went wrong and you will not acknowledge that and that we see change as that goes. So unfortunately, that's something that hasn't been had yet. But, you know, inshallah, it'll happen in, you know, in due time. When it comes to moving past pain mm -hmm. and trauma, how do you handle your relationships with the people you feel owe you something. I think that's what starts the issue in the first place is where you have this mentality that people owe you a certain, you know, amount of something. I feel everything is achie achievable if you really just apply yourself in the right places and the right scenarios in that you know, you put your energy, you put your time and focus into it. I think if you're sitting expecting, you know, somebody to come out and do something for you or there's this um, story in the Bible where there's this man and basically he's saying, <clears throat> no, my God is going to save me. And then a, a helicopter comes yeah, the, helico the helicopter comes by and it's like, hey, take the rope. And he's like, no, my God is going to save me. Then a boat comes and it's like, you know, you're just sitting expecting something when it's like, you know, opportunities pass you by. I choose to forgive and realize that this person is not, you know, is not going to be the exact person that I would want them to be. Nobody is. You know, I can just choose to be the best possible versions of myself and if those people do somehow come back into my life and realign with me, then great. You know, I don't push that away, but 
you know, I also can't ignore, you know, my feelings and how I, how I felt. And, you know, so I would say there's a great balance that is required within it, but you can't really expect for, you know, something from somebody always, all the time. Yeah. <clears throat> I believe to forgive isn't to forget. Mm-hmm. And the reason that you don't forget is because it's very easy for us as a people, whether it's someone that's done something to me or I've done some, something to someone, mm-hmm. it's very easy to make the same mistake in a different place in your life. Right. With those words, where have you had to grow in your life that has benefited you the most? I would say setting boundaries has been something that's been really great for me. I used to be a very bad people pleaser. And I think that came from just being in an African household as a whole. You know, mom and dad is kind of like at the top. You do anything that displeases mom and dad, you get a punishment. And it's like, there's no, there's no conversation that's had. There's no discussion. It's just straight to beating. And so I kind of got used to that submissive lifestyle where it's like, okay, just do, do, do. And rather it's, you know, what I've had to learn is that you have to assess, is this something that I want to do? Um, is this, you know, someone that I want to be connected with? Is this, you know, you ask yourself those questions and usually we know the answers. If you ask yourself a question, you, you, you know, you'll have a thought that pops in your brain that's, you know, really you and that you feel about yourself and that, you know, you know it's true, but you can also lie to yourself as well and trick yourself. So, you know, I, I, once I realized that I, I, I tried not to be hasty to decisions, you know, just saying yes, yes, yes. You know, saying, you know, I'll give me a day to think about it and I'll get back to you. And my partner, this is something I discussed with my partner, too, because I was really bad at this at the beginning of our relationship. But I was like, this is something I'm trying to work with. It's not going to be easy, but you can see that I'm trying. And this goes back to that point that we were talking about, about trying. And so I think that helped relinquish a lot of the stress that she was feeling like it's just something that's going to be you know forever am I going to be dealing with this and it's just like I'm trying even though it it might you know take me a day to just calm myself down come to you and present myself in a more logical way rather than just you know being sporadic around I think one not only you will appreciate that a lot more but two that's also helping me and causing a lot of the issues that we used to have to diminish. So, yeah, it's, it's setting boundaries and just knowing when to say no, analyzing situations, giving yourself time to think. It's been really great. And you owe yourself that as well, because you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're regretting thinking, I wish I would have just said no, or I wish I would have just said, you know, this or that. How would you say you treat yourself in comparison to your everyday sneakers? I would say I treat myself a bit more better than my sneakers. Mmm. One, I would say for more athletic wear, just kind of sneakers or height B sneakers, I guess you can say. I don't know. I, I think there's there's this notion in my mind where I see people just, you know, I, they wear these every day. So you see some that are beat up. You see some that still look good. So for me, I've kind of just disconnected from just the look of it and just like just putting it on and just wearing it whereas 
if you look at a more you know tailored fit where you know you might have a tucked in shirt a nice pressed pants nice shoes it's always very formal and put together so for me i tend to take more care of the shoes that i can create formal attires out of than the shoes that i can just kind of you know throw on some you know baggy jeans um, a nice shirt or something and just slip these on and you know you really wouldn't be able to tell from afar that you know there are certain scratches here and whatnot because it's just a jordan people are like oh you got jordans on you know it don't, it don't even matter <laughs> well if you come out here and your and your doc martens is looking dusty it's like what are those <laughs> In what way would you say you treat yourself better than your everyday sneaker? Um, that's a great question. I would say cleansing. I treat myself a lot better. So I guess cleansing for a shoe would be kind of what we're doing now. Like just getting rid of all the dirt that you don't want on it. Um, another thing is also innovation, I think, has also been very important for me because I am a very creative person and I like to think out the box. I hate being somewhat feeling constricted to a certain idea or a certain way of seeing something i'm very i'm in the middle with a lot of things i can understand from one perspective and from the other as well and just kind of being in the middle so what i would think that would be for like the shoes would would be maybe just like switching stuff up i tend to just leave them to be so like the laces you can see are still scuffed more, you know, sneaker heads would probably, you know, get new laces to make them look a little bit more cleaner. But for me, I kind of just keep them how they are. I don't know. With sneakers, I think they have their own story. So I have sneakers from all the way from when I was like 10 years old. And I don't know why I do it. I have the same thing with hats as well. So I've really been getting into hats. I don't know why that is as well. But sneakers, I know I've always, like, just kept them just because, like, what if I ever wear them? But really, it's not about me wearing them. It's just, like, there's, like, a comfort thing that comes with sneakers for me. How have you had to adapt to another culture? Mm. I would say it was fairly easy for me because I did come here when I was seven years old and coming here I didn't really speak that much of good English. I spoke about four different four different languages including English so that was French, Mende and um, Creole. But when I came here the school I went to was very welcoming. They put me in ESOL classes for the foreign kids and stuff, so I was learning English as the day goes. Um, I was a fairly smart kid as well, so I was bumped up a grade. Um, so that was that was a blessing from God. And um, yeah, it really, I don't remember it being too hard, but yet again, I was very young when I came here, so I don't remember a lot of much but so far from my recent experiences that I do recall just you do get weird interactions you know just from from people I went to college in Nebraska which was which was a great and an odd experience because there were people where you know, they treated you as if you were gold, as if you were like a gem. And then there were also other people that 
you know, you'll kind of just think like, what's the problem with them? Like, I'm just chilling, I'm not doing anything, but yet they choose to come my way and, you know, cause problems for God knows what. So, you know, it's it's been a weird experience, but I try not to fault people. Again, I try to stay balanced with a lot of stuff and understand where other people are coming from as well. So, I don't know. It really hasn't been anything that, you know, I would say it was too bad or too good. It's like, it's been right in the middle. Like, just been chilling. And really just been focusing on myself. I, I think when you just focus on yourself and want to see yourself grow and win on all sides, it's just like, no matter the energy that people bring towards you, you know, you know what energy you want to put out there. So just don't let anything phase that and then pretty much chill. When you think about who you've allowed to sell yourself to be, mm -hmm. explain to me how your morning routine has allowed you to allow that person to exist. Mm -hmm. And in what capacity? My, so I'll start off by basically just listing my morning routine that I've set for myself. So waking up, I try to wake up early as 9 a.m., sometimes 10 a.m. Usually the first thing that I would do is to shower and, of course, do the 30-second um, cold splash right before I get out of the shower and then that usually gives me like a shock so when I wake out of bed I feel very sluggish I feel like you know I just want to go right back into bed and what that cold shower has been doing is just kind of that discipline to do it regardless of if it's gonna be uncomfortable and I'm starting very slow I would like to get to a point where I can do a whole cold shower, but I just be in there just like shivering and stuff. So I'm starting slow with myself and understanding my starting point. So that's something that also brings awareness to just starting, meet yourself where you're at and understanding that uh, you can see somebody doing something and sometimes we want to imitate that, but you really don't have the capacity to sit there in that cold shower for like 15 20 minutes and it sounds crazy because it's just water but a lot of people will falter in that cold shower so i start off with that 30 seconds right after that um of course moisturize and all of that um i either do my workout first which will range from anywhere from like 30 minutes to 40 minutes and then I usually meditate as well sometimes it's on and off depending on if I feel centered in that day if I have control of my thoughts in that day control of myself in that day so I would just um, sit down meditate for however long I need you know I just kind of go with my body and when I feel I've relinquished all the energy that I need to relinquish and you know, filling myself up with good and positive thoughts and being present in the moment, feeling everything, feeling my seating position, where my hands are, the posture in my back. So I try to be very aware and in tune with how my body is feeling. Like if my arm had a voice, what would it say? Because, you know, it, it sounds like a very stupid question, but when you really think about it it's like if you ask those stupid questions you just might have an answer for it so i ask myself a lot of stupid stupid questions i ask my partner a lot of stupid questions um then after that i would do an after workout stretch which really helps to just relax my muscles and um so <clears throat> Basically, the whole martial arts of my morning routine is to mix 
work and also healing. So the work aspects of it would be the uncomfortable parts, the parts that I don't want to do. I don't want to wake up at like 9 a.m. pumping weights, like straining my muscles, then I'm sore the next day and I got to do it all over again. And then I don't want to do the cold showers, but it builds something in you where like you force yourself to do it, you know. And Mike Tyson once said that, you know, you, how did he, how did he word it? He said, There's some times where if you believe in this notion that you have to love what you do, there are certain things within what you do that you're not going to love, but you have to still do those things like you love it. So I think that helps with that um, fundamental in my life of just, there are things that you're uncomfortable with. So you're uncomfortable with telling people no or telling people you know, hey, I don't like when this is being done or we need more structure or if there's no structure, I can't work with you or if there's this, you know, so, you know, that's built a lot of confidence in me to step, set my foot down and know that, hey, this is uncomfortable. But if you ask yourself, is this something that, you know, you really want to change that you're tired of? Would you do something about it? The answer is probably yes. So then, you know, you just kind of have to go with that. And that's the whole instinct of trusting your gut. So it, it all comes from just asking yourself those questions. Did you want to move on to the other sneaker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think these are, these are as clean as they're going to be. Yeah, right now we got about 14 more minutes. 14. Gotcha. Yeah, I currently got a preview of another episode right now hey. in my shoes that's premiering right now in the background that's cool yep I that's how that joint's gonna look just as hard as that that's fire man <laughs> what would you say has been the best benefit or the greatest benefit since you started doing In My Shoes? I get to be a friend to my friend and friends to strangers. Mm. Every day my life is dedicated to three things. Mm -hmm. To me, God's naturally in the room, so he's not on the list. Mm. So it's my partner, my work, mm -hmm. myself, in any order. And in college, my college coach, my first coach, Coach Jake Swig, gave me some of the best advice ever. And I think that advice actually holds true to today. You can only be good at three things mm -hmm. in life at the same time. And it's not that you're bad at the well, you're going to be good at two things. So one thing is going to have to drop out of the group of threes. Mm. In college, the example was you can either be really popular, really good at school, mm. or really good at sports. You can't be all three at the same time. Right. Because if you are good at all three, that means that something that didn't make the list is the price that's being paid in order to be good at those things. So sometimes you may have <clears throat> a poor family relationship because you're not working on your family. Right. You may have a poor attention to detail. So you could be getting good grades, but looking back at it, if you were a little bit slower with your process instead of trying to be as fast as possible, mm -hmm. the grades could have been a better version right. of that. Right. So for me in college, I was great at the social aspect. I knew students. I knew the admin. I knew teachers. I knew the folks who worked on the grass. Mm -hmm. I could tell you things that students wouldn't know naturally because I was always curious about either how things ran or who did what and why. Right. Right. And I was good at sports, but in doing that, I wasn't really as good at school as I could have been in college. Right. But then I also came to realize in college that 
I was not applying myself to my studies in a way that I had access to. So most people, when they think of studies, it's like, look, you open up the book, you read, you take some notes, you go take the test, you're good. Right. And it's like, no, nah, not everybody is like that. I actually need a lot of repetition and self-test. Mm. And in order to do repetition and self-test, you have to be willing to fail. Right. In order to be willing to fail, you may either need to put your pride to the side or you may need to readjust how your pride works and what that's gonna allow you to do. You also need time to do that. In order to do that, that might mean you may need to study less football film. You may need right. to miss a couple create meetings. You may need to create a little bit more pressure on yourself that you may not apply before. And that actually holds true to now how I run my life. Like what I do with in my shoes isn't particularly about mental health like Mental Health Monday is. Mm -hmm. It's more of I get to hear the person's story and I get to ask my friends questions that I normally wouldn't be able to get to ask them in like a normal setting. Like right. if you're at a bar and you're getting drinks, or you're catching up, you're usually talking about what you fixed or what you're proud that has happened because mm -hmm. you would like the alcohol to be a good experience. Right. And if you do talk about an experience that's not that great, you have five to 10 minutes tops to summarize a painful moment that was days, months, hours yeah. <laughs> into 10 minutes. Right. And I think it's okay to acknowledge that we don't have real conversations with each other, but we do at least care about the smallest version that we're able to get out of our friends when we ask them, hey, how have you been? Right. So in my shoes is the equivalent of if you asked how have you been out loud and the person actually had a space to speak on, you know, maybe I haven't been all that great. Right. Or maybe I have been great, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't wanna, yeah, it's very hard to do that, man. Yeah. 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 Even uh, the healthiest people, I, uh, I sometimes... I, I entertain the thought of you don't have to be healthy at all times. Mm -hmm. You know, in order to enjoy the good, there had to have been bad or you've had to have learned through someone else's experience right. as to what that bad was before they became the person that we now may either admire or be proud of or sometimes question why do they handle things the wrong way, but it's been their consistent thing that they depend on. Mm -hmm. Most folks usually measure their friendships by do they have my back when I need them? And sometimes the measurement of a friendship is can I trust this person to not mess things up when I've worked so hard to make sure that things will work? Mm -hmm. And then also That's creating true. space for the people to be who they need to be. Even in uh, my current relationship, mm -hmm. which which I think, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be my longest relationship today. Hey, let's Four go. years in August. Um, one day we had a conversation and I told her, you know, in order for our relationship to work, you don't need to be who you were when I met you. Right. I just need to be able to make space for who you become tomorrow when you open your eyes. And hopefully I have the capacity to make a couple of inches for that person here and there. And right. then we'll go from there. Right. And hopefully you could do the same for me because I think it is sometimes a mistake to hold the people around you to the same standard you hold yourself to because they're not you. The right. thought process isn't yours. <laughs> what they're going through isn't right. yours. You both have two very separate histories that happen to be walking alongside each other today. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to put it. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, more than answered my question. That was one hundred percent spot on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> story of my life, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And finding the patience for that and the energy. That's why I ask. You know, um, your thoughts on is talking exhausting? Because when I hear people say, you know, we talk. I, I I could always find time and make space for a conversation, especially if it's important. Mm -hmm. But for someone who isn't high when it comes to communication or big when it comes to self-expression, mm -hmm. 
where you are today may take someone seven years to get to just because of the environment that they came out of. Right. Sometimes people will hear someone talk and be like, man, you said 23 words too many and you lost me at letter number 17. <laughs> And I think to be fair, I understand when I come across those people and I'm like, you know what? No, I get it. Mm -hmm. At least you tried. I, I know where the effort were. The effort stopped at 16. I right. get you. Yeah. When it comes to these sneakers that you've brought here today, what would you say are their redeeming qualities? Hmm. Redeeming in like how they bring me benefit. Well, you've worn them less, but when yeah. you when you brought them out the closet today, you felt joy. You right. felt, man, I I really haven't worn you in a while. Right. <laughs> it's it's good when you question things because it's because you care. Mm. Questions aren't free. Right. So, the reason I selected these, mm -hmm. well. These shoes, so the moment I got these shoes was a very exciting moment for me and my partner. I got these shoes where, when um, I first met her family on her mother's side. So they were super cool, very welcoming and very understanding. And this was like on the day where we had to get on the Amtrak to come back to Maryland. And then I was like, Oh, the mall's right there. She wanted a like a pretzel or something. And upon us just going in there, I stumbled on these shoes outside of Foot Locker and I was like, they were in a case. I was like, oh. I was like, I gotta get them. So I just got them and I don't know, it's a very bright shoe, but yet very subtle. And I think that's just what has been coming into my life a lot more. Just bright brightness and just subtle blessings that I've been getting from God. I've recently started getting very close with, with, um, with Allah as well. So um, I've only been seeing beneficial things coming from that, growth coming from that, strengthening coming from that. And I speak that upon myself um, whenever I get the chance. Some days I'm unlucky, but some days I am. So, um, yeah, when I picked these, I just felt a sense of warmness, a sense of, even though they're heavy, just a sense of lightness. So, yeah, that's, I would say that's what pushed me to just grab them. And they were also in the front as well. I don't keep any of my shoes in the closets. So they were right there in like this little inspicuous area. But then I just saw it just like you can see the blue from all the other colors in the um, in the little shoe case that we have. So it's like, let me just grab these. And they were a little dirty. And I was like, you know, I might want to clean these up. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> from what yeah. you've come to understand about yourself, what would you say is your redeeming quality? Hmm. My redeeming quality would be just genuineness. Um, I think I come into a lot of experiences that I come into with just genuine curiosity and just wanting to learn. Um, at heart, I'm a very nervous person, which is very crazy because when you see me work at Bronze, it's like, you know, I'm just all over the place. I'm talking to this person and this person. But, you know, beneath all that, I'm a very shy person. I, I, um, I'm very analytical. So with my logic brings a lot of comfort. Like if I can make something sound safe in my mind and OK in my mind, I can convince my body to, you know, relax and just be in the moment. So I would say being genuine in 
just down to earth. I'm willing to have a conversation with anyone, even, you know, the homeless man on the on the side of the street to a rich bill, billionaire. You know, it it all doesn't make it doesn't make a difference for me as long as, you know, I can speak to someone and gain something and also give them a piece of me as well. So I think that is something that the world needs a lot more, a lot more understanding, a lot more balance, a lot more genuineness and just coming at things with the presence of let's see how this goes and go from there rather than, you know, coming in there with, you know, preconceived notions and all that, all that, um, all that muck that you convince yourself of and all that. So it's not something that I would say I'm the best at, but it's something that um, I'm continuing to grow in and, and also learn from. This is a day in my shoes.